Indian opposition leader Rahul Gandhi set to return to politics. The Supreme Court suspends his defamation conviction. How much of a challenge does he pose to the governing BJP? What does it mean for India's state of democracy? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the show. I'm Sami Zaydan. It's a case some see as an example of political persecution. India's opposition leader Rahul Gandhi was sentenced to jail after being convicted of defaming Prime Minister Narendra Modi in March. Well, now the Supreme Court has suspended the conviction. That could pave the way for the Congress party chief to make a political comeback. But this case is prompting questions about India's judicial system and the state of its democracy. So how will this affect the chances of the government and the opposition in next year's elections? We'll get into that with our guests in a moment. But first, this report from Katia lopez Orian. He is one of India's well-known political figures. And now opposition leader Rahul Gandhi's case is perhaps the most controversial. A high court has suspended his conviction for defamation after he stated all thieves have Modi as their last name. Many saw that as an insult against Prime Minister Narendra Modi. With the defamation case now thrown out, both allies and rivals of India's Congress party leader are waiting on what he'll do next. Truth wins, but whatever happens, my path is clear. I have clarity in my mind about what I have to do and what my work is all about. I thank the people who helped us for their love and support. The two-year jail sentence in March automatically led to Gandhi's suspension from parliament. Now he might be able to retake his seat and even run against Modi's party in next year's national elections. His stature has gone up and he's been seen as somebody who's been singled out, who's been persecuted through prosecution by the government. And if they continue to, to deny him entry into parliament despite the order judgment of the Supreme Court, they will be making things worse for themselves. Prime Minister Modi and his party have been accused of playing politics to push rivals out. The BJP denies this and says the recent court rulings proves is not the one pulling the strings. We are the people of one country, under one society. But unfortunately, Opposition parties have made this their one identity based on abusing and belittling us. Despite this, we've tried to maintain cordiality and dignity of politics. Gandhi's great-grandfather was India's first prime minister. The 53-year-old may be popular, but it hasn't led to victory at the polls. Under his leadership, critics say the opposition Congress party has been weakened. While out on bail, he managed to merge several parties into an alliance under the acronym INDIA. But so far, its support has been limited. Some analysts say Gandhi's case has shifted the national conversation, raising questions about the politicization of courts, political rivalry, and the state of democracy in India. Katia lopez Odoyan for Inside Story. All right, let's bring in our guests. They're all joining us from New Delhi. Shazia Ilmi is a spokeswoman for the governing BJP. Sabah Nakvi is a visiting professor at the Jindal School of Journalism and Communications and an independent journalist who writes about hate speech in India. And Supriya Srinath, a spokeswoman for the opposition Indian National Congress Party. A warm welcome to you all. If I could start with Shazia then. Do you see this court decision as a game changer for Indian politics? Well, not really. Rahul Gandhi does not impact the prospects of uh, my party, which is BJP, at all. I'm glad that the Supreme Court has prevailed, and this is a testimony to India's robust judiciary and its uh, vibrant democracy. The fact of the matter is that lower courts, uh, uh, the, the, the sentence by the lower courts has been kept in abeyance, and Rahul Gandhi can now go on to contest uh, elections. 
But the question is, will he go to contest from a committee where he, which was his traditional uh, bastion, family bastion constituency, and would he uh, contest from there again, or will he again go to Kerala, where he's an MP from, and choose the same constituency? I think well, that let's... will be the deciding factor. Let, let me bring Supriya into the chat. Do you share that perspective, or do you think that Rahul Gandhi might make a bigger impact on the chances of either the Congress or the BJP in the next elections? It's good to be on your show and great to be with all women family. Uh, with all due respect to my worthy opponent from the BJP, uh, I beg to differ. I think Rahul Gandhi makes a lot of difference uh, to the Bharatiya Janata Party, to the ruling government, so much so uh, that each time he puts the government in the dock or asks some pertinent questions of national importance, whether it's on price rise or unemployment or uh, the Adani uh, scam, or for that matter, the Chinese incursion, the ruling establishment goes on a back foot. Some of the ministers come out, all guns blazing against him with no substantial answers to the question that he raises. The reality is that even in this case, and I agree on one thing with Shazia Almi, that the Supreme Court has made a historic verdict, but the Supreme Court of India, India's highest court in the land, has also shown a mirror uh, to other courts, uh, particularly the ones in Gujarat. And, you know, three courts in Gujarat upheld the sentencing, upheld the conviction. The fact that the Supreme Court of India not just stayed the conviction, but also very categorically uh, showed the mirror to these courts in Gujarat and said, the verdicts that are coming out of there, the lesser said the better, uh, throws a lot of light on this. And please understand what has happened. I'm just going to take 10 seconds to explain this. Uh, the union Bri government briefly, cannot absolve could. itself. Yes, the union government cannot absolve itself of what really happened. They went shopping for a case where Rahul Gandhi could be convicted for two years. For the first time in the 162 years of Indian penal code history, has a candidate or a man been convicted for two years? If he was convicted for a day left, he would not have been disqualified. So we welcome the Supreme Court's decision. All right, Supreme, and I'm going to jump in because we will, we will have time. His membership. Right, we will have time to try and unpack more. You're right, there is something for us to talk about in terms of the actual ruling. But before we do that, though, if we can continue this little chat on the political aspect of it. And I want to bring in Saba. There's a question here, Saba, about how quickly, how smoothly will he be reinstated back to Parliament? Is that clear yet? So I think uh, it will be very awkward if the, if the BJP does not, uh, if the Speaker of the Parliament does not bring him back to the House. But, you know, these days anything is possible because the manner in which he was made to leave the House also Supriya has a point. That was an extraordinary conviction at a time when every day the hate speech is made in India, at a time when there is an MP of the ruling BJP who has been accused of sexual harassment by women athletes. He continues. At that time, Rahul Gandhi, for, his, for, for saying for, for something very innocuous and which is said in politics, was suddenly got a conviction in Gujarat. That happened in the last session of Parliament. So, uh, yes, there is a question, but I think he will get reinstated as an MP right now. That is my uh, guess, because that is the correct thing to do. Because right. in this case, the Supreme Court of India has, uh, has stepped in and said that this uh, conviction does not stand the scrutiny of law and so on and so forth. So I think he will get reinstated as an MP. And uh, in a bizarre way, his stature has been enhanced by this attempt to shut him up. Okay, so that's, that's an interesting point. Let me let me take it back to Shazia. Shazia, I know you said earlier you don't think that the reinstatement of Rahul Gandhi is going to make much impact on the BJP. But no, my, if we look yes, at yes, what so happened in May elections in Karnataka, doesn't don't those elections show that Rahul Gandhi can be effective? in unseating the BJP? Well, that's one election out of almost 40, where he's just lost elections after elections. So he's got a very poor track record. But coming back to Supreme Court, let me tell you, while the Supreme Court of India gives Rahul Gandhi uh, some relief, uh, let me tell you, it is the same Supreme Court which reprimanded Rahul Gandhi um, uh, earlier and wrapped uh, his knuckles for just lying constantly. Uh, he talked about uh, the Prime Minister being a thief, and he said the Supreme Court has been saying that, and he was slapped with a contempt of court notice. 
He had to surrender an unconditional apology uh, on the matter of Pegasus when he lied again. Again, he was wrapped on the knuckles and reprimanded by the Supreme Court. Yes, the same Supreme Court, Supreme Court which has given him relief at this point of time, showing that there is complete fairness in the way democracy is practiced in India. Also, about uh, since uh, Sabha is uh, cloning uh, uh, Supriya Srinath and they both have the same thing to say, I hope you afford me uh, uh, equal time, you know, to both sides because both of them represent uh, one point of view. Well, I, I'm um, trying to give each speaker. I'm not sure unfair. that they would agree that they're cloning unfair. each other, but I, I will try and give unfair. everybody an opportunity to, to speak. Go, go ahead and finish the thought. Yeah, Shazia. but the, the two people are clones of each other, so I think it's a, you know it's a waste of footage because they, they end up. Uh, you have to have both the how, sides. How right? about Shazia? Let's start. Measure. Let's focus rather than on personalities. Let's focus on the subject we're yes. discussing. All right. So go ahead so and finish your thought. I'm talking about the weightage in terms of time and uh, perspectives. Please use it's the time you have. Have, and go ahead and give us your okay, thoughts sure. on the subject. So also, prime, you know, uh, if you look at Rahul Gandhi, we're not even sure whether he's he's there to give competition uh, to Modi. Mo uh, prime Minister Modi who's come back for the second time in a resounding majority. And we are sure, prepared and poised to win 2024 mm -hmm. elections. It's not even clear whether the alliance they're a part of the, uh, is actually going to um, show the crown prince as the leader of the alliance. Okay. To, um, because there are many other con many other leaders contending for the PM wannabe PM position. So I think it might not be that easy. But well, I wish good luck to Rahul Gandhi. All right. Let, let me bring in uh, Supri. I'm sure she has something to say about this. Does do supporters of the BJP have a point when they characterize Rahul Gandhi as? A prince, someone who's lost touch with people, as the BJP says, there's no place in democracy for dynastic politics. What do you say to that, Supriya? BJP should be the last party talking about dynastic politics, and they should be the last people mocking alliances. The prime minister a month back slapped his chest and said, I am, you know, it's me versus everybody else. And then he had to stitch a grand alliance of 38 parties 24 of them have zero members of parliament, seven have one and two have uh, only two. There are nine parties in that coalition that come from the northeastern part of this country where Manipur has been in the throes of violence and anarchy for the last three months. And the prime minister of this country spoke for the first time on Manipur after 78 days, when a very, very vitriolic, when a very disturbing video emerged from there, where women were being paraded naked and, uh, you know, there was an entire crowd of people and then they were subsequently raped. So the lesser said about what the prime minister should and should not speak about, the better. Uh, with all due respect to Shazia, I think it's unfair to call two of your other panelists let, clones of each other. Let, let me jump in. the power of your argument. Okay, okay. Can I, let me no, jump in, I just Supriya. want to make a point, please. Can I, can I, I can I jump in, Supriya, point. and put the question this way, though? Despite of everything that you've said, your criticism of the government, yet the government has keeps winning elections, basically, and Rahul Gandhi's history suggests Not he's really. presided over crushing electoral defeats in 2014 and 2019. Is he the man to fix the challenges that the Congress party faces? No, I think before the Congress party's challenges, the challenges that India faces are phenomenal. The challenges that India faces are very big. The fact that one state of India has been burning for the last three months now and the government has done precious little to stop that is the challenge India faces. India faces a challenge of acute unemployment, huge income inequality, high prices. Tomatoes in India are being sold at 300 rupees a kg, which is, which is absolutely brazen and it breaks the back of middle class and the poor. The reality is that the poor are being made to pay taxes to the tune of 64% of indirect taxes being collected. But that apart, I just want to say one very important thing. Please don't be led by, misled by headlines. Yes, the government did win the 2014 and the 2019 elections. The Bharatiya Janata Party won it. 
They had a crushing defeat in Himachal, and then they were defeated in Karnataka, where Mr. Modi himself put himself on the ticket. He said, the vote is for me, and yet people resoundingly rejected him in both Karnataka and Himachal Pradesh. The reality is All that right. we have a coalition of people who come together with an ideology to preserve and save our constitution, and they are indulging okay, in so naked Priya, pursuit of you've power, made the point. whereas people suffer. All right, let me bring Sabah in. Talking about the coalition, the idea of a grand alliance of opposition parties, Sabah. Will it now, do you think, gain more traction after this court verdict? Will Rahul Gandhi be able to further galvanize this opposition alliance? So this opposition alliance is being galvanized not just the leadership of the Congress party, but by regional parties. Because parties face today in India, they face an existential crisis. I'll tell you why coalition alliance politics is important, because I covered the BJP for a long time, and I've written a book on them. So they've lost two states. They've lost their alliance partners, which are two states which uh, give large section of MPs uh, to the Indian parliament. They've lost their traditional alliance partners in Maharashtra and in Bihar. So they have broken other parties. Now, what has happened is enforcement agencies are used, and MPs are weaned away, but there is no guarantee at the end that the popular support is also going with the breakaway factions. So there's a very complicated thing that's happened. So the BJP knows that there is a numerical shortfall coming its way into, uh, it's not, uh, it would be a mistake. Bharatiya Janata Party does run around the personality of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. There is no doubt about that. It would be a mistake in my view to project the battle that is going to come as being with one face. It is going to be about alliances. And yes, Rahul Gandhi has added a lot of elements to it in the past year because he went on an all India journey. And uh, he has he was being targeted. The BJP also uh, targeted him specifically because he raised in the last session of parliament, he specifically raised issues about the Adani scandal which was which involved the prime minister it was an international report and the prime minister did not wish to re uh, respond suddenly we had this verdict saying that he had uh, defamed someone out of a gujarat court so now we are, it's the thing about democracy in india is that it works in multiple languages which doesn't happen anywhere in the world so it cannot okay. usually be about one person all right, so all right. it is about a very strong parties are on the side of the alliance that has been put together, and the Congress is the most significant party there, and the Congress is growing. Okay, so Summer, let, had let me jump in. I know, Supriya, I know you want to jump in, Supriya, but let's give Shazia a chance first, and I promise I'll come back to you in a minute, Supriya. Basically, Shazia, boiling down some of the, the sentiments we've heard from Sabah there, there is a concern, is there not, about the state of democracy? There is a concern about the state and condition of the judiciary. Is the implication, you guys wanted to get into this earlier on, so let me bring it up now. The implication of the latest ruling by the Supreme Court, is, is there an implication there that the lower courts and the Gujarat High Court, where the BJP holds a lot of power, of course, are politicised? Well, if they were politicized, there would not be any relief for Rahul Gandhi. And if they were but indeed politicized... he had to get it at the Supreme Court uh, level. And you see, you see, the... the no, I think... And I think there was a, also... A, let me correct a, a part of your package which insinuates that, that, that it was seen to be an insult to Modi when Modi's surname was used. Yes, Rahul Gandhi was talking about Modi, but Modi is a backward caste. Modi's are also a backward caste. And the person who filed a complaint belongs to a... A, a backward caste. And when Rahul Gandhi uh, used the name and said, all Modi's are thieves, uh, it, it was taken as a, 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 with, uh, as umbrage. It was seen as umbrage and out, uh, people were outraged from the Dalit uh, community, from the backward community, mind you. And which is why the, the Sessions Court uh, made this. Which is uh, and, what our report Gandhi pointed out, of course. Our report did not only and, say Rahul that... Gandhi earlier, but no you, doubt Rahul Gandhi earlier... The, the Prime Minister uh, was I offended, finish, right? I just want to I just want to finish saying what I'm saying. So uh, Rahul Gandhi has tendered an, an apology to the same Supreme Court. So uh, what I'm saying is that there are sessions, there are lower courts, and there is a Supreme Court, 
when it suits somebody, they say Supreme Court is great, when it does not, there are many times in the Sessions Courts or lower courts give a judgment in favor of BGP or Congress, but I don't think judiciary is politicized at all. They would like to give the impression, but now they have egg on their face because they've actually got relief. So they don't know where to look and keep blaming the judiciary. But the fact is the judiciary is vibrant, robust, and fair. Also, the question about alliance. Yes, B BGP ha has... Hang on, before you get to uh, the alliances, uh, Shazia, partners, I'll, give you, I'll give you a chance to finish... Need. I'll give you a BGP chance to finish your thought on alliances, but how, how would you BGP respond to the suggestion which was raised by our guest that defamation is... charges rarely ever prompt two-year sentences in India, right? That is a very rare... Like, and it happened in this case just to meet the legal uh, necessary definition of what it would take to knock out a member of parliament. How would you respond to that? You're asking me? Yes. Okay, I... Well, I feel Rahul Gandhi not just refused to apologize to the member of the backward community, where the sur whose surname happened to be Modi, but also did not even file or ask, or his lawyers were probably not, did not take it seriously or were too lazy to even file for bail. So they, they, it's almost as if they asked for it to gain some kind of uh, support to appear martyr-like and use the situation. Because they had, even then, if they knew the judicial processes, which I'm sure they have lots of uh, strong legal minds, they refused to come to Rahul's help. So Rahul Gandhi kind of used this opportunity to build some kind of uh, sympathy for himself and not asking for any kind of bail. And uh, this is the law. So right. you can, I, 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 I would you... not say anything against the Sessions Court. I would not speak against the Sessions Court or the, okay. or, or the mindset or, or, or the uh, wisdom of the judge who pronounced this, nor would I question the Supreme Court. Okay, let me give you 10 seconds, Shazia, to continue the thought. You were talking to us. You wanted to come back on the point of the opposition alliances. Go ahead. I'll give you 10, 15 seconds yes, so, to finish your thought there before yes, we move so I, Yes. So the two other two panelists are talking about BGP and the need for uh, alliance partners. Let me tell you, BGP did extremely well, and this is the first time since 1989 that a party has come back with a, with a bigger majority in the Lok Sabha uh, for the consecutive second time. And let me tell you that BGP really on its own is enough in terms of just numbers and would not need uh, the partners. As for the other two partners, uh, which uh, Sabha was talking about, uh, two of them are in Maharashtra, and let me tell you, one of the key members of so-called uh, this new alliance that has been made uh, by Rahul Gandhi's team, Sharad Pawar disagrees with Rahul Gandhi on many of the charges he's made, including that on the Adani issue. In fact, he is the closest to Adani, uh, and he goes to meet him regularly. A lot of Adani projects are there in Congress states, and none of them have been stalled at all okay. by Rahul Gandhi. Okay, Despite all right. The, so I don't think anybody you in the Congress party takes him seriously, and okay, he's you've made that prince, point. No one takes him seriously gesture. within the Congress party. Let me give Supriya, because I did promise her an opportunity to get back in. She's been angling. So go ahead, Supriya. No, I'm not angling. I'll make my argument short. She spoke for 5 minutes, 15 seconds. I'm hoping you'll give me that sort of time, but that apart. Rahul Gandhi embarked on a journey from Kanyakumari, the tip of India in the south, to Kashmir in the north. And what did he do? This was called the Bharat Joro Yatra, which was an endeavor to keep India united. He met people from all castes, all religions, all stratas of society, who kept saying the kind of problems that they're facing, the kind of issues that the government wants to gloss over. The reality today is that India, the coalition that we have stitched together, stands for Indian National Developmental Inclusive Alliance. The prime minister is telling his MPs to actually call it to, to somehow mispronounce it, to call it Ghamandia, which in uh, quote-unquote in Hindi, it means, uh, in English, it means uh, anybody drunk on power. I mean, the prime minister is talking about India uh, in reference to the Indian Mujahideen, a terror organization of the East India Company, which is a symbol of slavery. What has happened to the prime minister? Is he so rattled? Is he so baffled? Is he so scared running helter-skelter? And which is why he is doing this, because nobody in their right minds would speak about a motherland, about a nation that we call our own, about India, 
the way the prime minister is speaking, it's absolutely shameful. He should restrain from doing that. He's speaking at an international platform. And All right, Supriya, so I understand probably both sides would say the other anything. side is speaking no, in an inappropriate way. Saying, could, no, could we focus on I, the issue here now? Is there a bigger issue about the state of democracy in India? To, to quote the Sweden-based VDEM Institute in its Democracy Report 2023, it says India is one of the worst autocratizers in the last 10 years. I think there is a serious issue with how institutions are being undermined. There is no denying that, whether those are investigative agencies like an in enforcement directorate or the CBI. The enforcement directorate has seen cases go up fourfold since Mr. Modi has come to power. And guess what? 95% of those cases are against India's opposition. Uh, people who decide to switch ship and turn to the BJP, see their cases ebb away, and they're never investigated, they're never tortured, they're never put behind bars. But the rest of the opposition is villainized. Uh, you know, look at the condition of Indian media today, and with all due respect to my friends in media, because I, I used to previously work as a journalist, just like, uh, you know, my, my opponent from the BJP did. Look at the state of media. The media cannot call a spade a spade anymore. If you, if you okay. do an investigative story, chances are that a case may be filed against you. So I think if pillars of democracy like the media, like independent institutions, like the judiciary, keep democracy alive. And there is a All very right. concerted you, you made a effort good point. to undermine we, them. I want to give Sabra a chance. And if there's a chance after that, a brief minute to Shazia. But Sabra, go ahead on the point of what's happening to democracy. It's not only the Sweden-based VDEM Institute. Well, look, you read I mean, the Freedom House report of 2022. It says the prime minister is presiding over persecution of minorities, harassments of journalists and non-government organizations, as well as government critics. Do they have a point? Uh, to that, to an, to an extent, yes, but we are going to have an election where we, we are functioning as an electoral democracy. In that sense, we are correct. What is happening is that institutions are being subverted and there is a very, very strong pushback against critics of the government. This is unprecedented. This did not happen before. If the, there was earlier a BJP regime from 98 to 2004. You did not have the opposition being hounded in the manner that was a coalition regime. And that did not, you did not have the opposition being hounded in the manner right. in what is happening right now. It is, Sabah, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we've got 30 seconds left. I, I know Shazia will be very upset if we don't give her a chance. Shazia, go ahead with your response to that in 30 seconds, though. Thank you. So may I remind the two panelists that I also was an anchor and was in television, after which I was part of India Against Corruption. It is this Congress party which threw Anna Hazare, an octogenarian, into the jail and could not bear any, any kind of dissent when it came to Congress. And uh, every day I sit on different panels where they just abuse and vilify the prime minister. So I don't know what democracy or lack of it is being talked about right. here. As for the various... Uh, all right. I'm really sorry. We are out of time. I know that this discussion can go on for a lot longer. I'm sure there'll be another opportunity for all four of us to discuss this, though, in the future. But for now, let's thank our guests very much, Shazia Ilmi, Sabah Nakvi and Supriya Srinayat. And thank you, too, for watching. You can see the show again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. For further discussion, head over to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle there is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Sami Zaydan, and the entire team here for now is goodbye.